Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Superman Lower Season 3. Today we're going to be doing my review slash breakdown of Episode 7. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any future DCTV videos later this year. Okay guys, so another great episode of Superman Lois. We had lots of twists and turns, especially at the ending of the episode. I really can't wait to talk about that, so stick with me throughout this whole video because we're going to go in depth into every single thing that was important that happened in this episode. So, the episode begins with Lois throwing up and Clark is just supporting her. Being sick is something that happens when you go through chemo. It's tough on the body and Lois is on round four according to what I think I heard at the start of the episode, but Jordan and Jonathan are worried about Lois. They know that their mum is potentially hiding something from them in terms of like how sick she actually is and so they go digging in this episode. But let's talk John Henry Irons because he's back after a little bit of a break. They briefly explain it in the episode whilst John Henry is talking to Lana at one point in the shop saying that he'd been away for a while sorting out some stuff and then he just returned a couple of days ago so that's your mini explanation. But it's good to have John Henry back because I think he's a really good character and I love every time that he is on screen and I think he's got an interesting story right now with Natalie and her boyfriend, Matteo. And so they are planning a lunch, but you can clearly see he's very skeptical about what's going on. And, you know, there is a somewhat similar situation. Obviously, it's with a different kind of thing that Lana is dealing with, but she's got something as well. And so the two of them are quite regularly talking, especially since what happened with Onomatopoeia. And so Chrissy talks to Lana at the diner. Sarah takes a jab at Chrissy for ordering her dad's order. So this is not a great first encounter after things have been made official, but they knew it would go bad. But I still feel very bad for Chrissy because she hasn't done anything wrong and it's made pretty clear in this episode that that is the truth. So at Lois's next chemo treatment, she is at Hobbs Bay. She's talking with Pierre where we get a flashback to Pierre and Bruno's origin. Obviously, we found out about them in the previous episode, but they were working for someone called Moxie and you can tell they're pretty powerful because of the way that they talk about him. It's made pretty clear that he's pretty much like the original intergang member as far as we know and so Pierre talks to Lois about how her husband would do anything for him and obviously we know that it's Bruno so he's literally running this facility just for her in terms of trying to get her back to the way that she's supposed to be or the way that they originally met and so also in this episode Lois tries to get closer to Pierre by showing photos of her family but when she asks the same of Pierre, Pierre is very cagey about her family, says she doesn't have her phone, she gets very angsty at one point and they have a fight and things don't go down very well but while this is happening Jonathan and Jordan talk to Superman's mum in the fortress about what is going on and the fact that they think there could be Kryptonian tech that could save Lois from her cancer, but the hologram warns that this tech could be way too dangerous and Lois may not survive if they use it because it's never been tested before. But is it worth the risk? Like how far is Clark willing to go in order to save Lois? That's a question posed to Clark in this episode by Bruno Mannheim himself. And so Clark interrupts the two of them, that being Jonathan and Jordan, at the fortress because he realizes what's going on and he basically flies over from the medical center to try and crack down and see what they're up to. And so Bruno reveals in a flashback that he previously wanted to make a deal with Lex and he takes this to Moxie and he tries to convince him to take back over the south of Metropolis at least and it's pretty clear that Moxie doesn't think much of Bruno apart from the fact that you know his aspirations aren't probably going to align with what he's thinking so you kind of get in your head okay there's going to be a power shift pretty soon considering how we know that the power is kind of balanced in South Metropolis and in Metropolis today like there is no such thing as Moxie anymore and so as I said before, Lois interrogates Pierre kind of over her Mannheim connections. Lois tells Clark she doesn't trust her instincts anymore after 
Pierre moves away and basically distances herself from Lois. And that's when Clark comes up with the idea to go to Bruno Mannheim and to let him tell his story to the world, but also while kind of interrogating him himself, trying to figure out what exactly is going on. And so Bruno gives a tour of an old factory to Pierre in a flashback as he talks to Clark in the present day. And I think Clark's questions are very good and they definitely cut deep into Bruno and what he's doing. And Clark figures out that cancer is very important to him and that he has someone very close to him that he's doing all of this for because all of his other businesses turn a profit. But this is not a business that turns any profit. So this is a red flag for Clark and obviously Bruno in this situation doesn't know what to do as things become very intense between the two of them. Obviously Clark isn't scared of him at all due to who he is. Obviously Bruno doesn't know that so he's not going to do anything considering that he is a journalist. However, we don't know how far Bruno is willing to go in order to silence people, but he doesn't silence Clark here. And so at Kyle's apartment, Chrissy meets Sarah once again and she goes full on mean girl rolling eyes and everything and they kind of make a step here which was quite cool as they both head off to the movie theater together and they connect over Coachella and something else that we won't be discussing on this channel unless we want to get demonetized but yeah it's kind of good to see them make a step like I really felt bad for Chrissy in this episode as I'm sure many of you guys did. But Lana is approached by John Henry Irons after the lunch that he and Natalie and Matteo have at their house because he gets super protective, super cagey, and it's quite clear that he's uncomfortable by the connection that is shared between Matteo and Natalie. And so lunch is ruined by John Henry's constant questions. And so he goes to see Lana and she's like, John, what happened to the cool dad? And he basically says he got super protective and he's basically feeling bad now. And Lana gives some good advice and, you know, she needs some advice too for what she's dealing with because she reacts strongly after this to Sarah and Chrissy having fun after the cinema when they come out. But Sarah and Lana figure things out at the end of the episode as they go shoot fireworks together, which is a nice mother-daughter moment. But back in Metropolis, Lois makes up with Pierre. Lois even goes as far as saying she would really like to be good friends. But in my mind, I'm like, oh, you just wait because we know exactly Pierre's connection with Bruno. And at this point, Lois doesn't know anything, but Clark figures out, obviously, he cares about someone there and he is doing all of this to save someone. And that someone is Pierre. We know that. Lois doesn't know that. And so Lois even invites Pierre to come to their farm and bring their whole family and basically get to meet everyone and have a little slice of the small town life. But it's at this point when Pierre cuts Lois off and is saying, it's gone too far, this was never supposed to happen. And that is paired with a shot of Bruno and Clark showing up as it's revealed to Lois that Pierre and Bruno are in fact together. They are husband and wife and now Lois knows the truth. Also at this point I want to say I'm sorry that my voice is kind of a little bit croaky. I just realized that it was going in the last couple of minutes so I apologize for that but bear with me for now. Obviously this is a big deal for Bruno considering that Clark and Lois are journalists and They've kept this secret for such a long time. The truth is going to be out there for sure after this as they go on to the rooftop of Hobbs Bay Medical Center because Pierre has ended her treatment and she gives a mini speech on the rooftop with Bruno and everyone else there. Clark and Lois are there and they all shout screw cancer, which is a very nice moment to be shared between these opposing forces. And honestly, right now we're in a very tricky situation and I like where the writers have actually put our characters because now Lois is in a strange situation and so is Clark because on the one hand they know Mannheim has done some very bad things but he does genuinely care about you know some people and some of the things that he has done has been with true purpose they are aware of that and the fact that Lois cares for Pierre and obviously she's going through the same thing as Lois in terms of having cancer so they totally feel for what they are going through they entirely relate to them but at the end of the day they're gonna have to make a decision will they continue to pursue Bruno Mannheim and I think the very easy answer to that is yes so I think Pierre was right to end this because 
it's never going to work between them. There's always going to be suspicion and they could never be true friends. And I think that is just the sad situation of what's going on. Plus also when it's revealed that Pierre is actually on a Matapia and she has killed many, many people. I don't think Lois is going to respect her and I don't think Lois could have a friend like that because of the way that Lois is and I think most of us would agree with her. So anyway, Jonathan confronts both Clark and Lois about the will and final letters because they have been previously inside the Kent family farm rummaging through Lois's drawers and they find the final will and the letters that she has wrote to everyone just in case she does die. Obviously, this is just precautions. We talked about this in a previous video where we were reviewing an earlier episode when she was actually filling these out. As I said before, this is actually kind of normal procedure. And yes, it may seem dark and dire, just like the way that Jonathan and Jordan react to it. But at the same time, if you accept reality, I think it's a good option and you've got to be prepared for anything. And I think they are just going to come around to this but Jonathan and Jordan are obviously kids they are teenagers and it's extremely hard to go through anything like this especially when it's to do with your family but most especially to do with your parents who you've grown up with your entire life so they all share this great scene together and Lois is extremely emotional along with Jonathan and Jordan and Clark and Lois is like, we're just going to all have to accept that this is the reality. Yes, the treatment is extremely tough on Lois's body. And Jonathan tops this all off by saying, I just don't want you to die. And I think that just really hits home for everyone watching this episode. Like, there's no way you watch this and you're like, okay, this is not working for me. The acting's great. The writing's great. It looks great. The story works overall. I really see no cracks in Superman Lois. Like, it's just that good. Later on, when Clark is outside the house and everything is settled down, Jonathan comes out and basically apologizes for what he was doing. But also, they have this nice conversation where Clark reminds Jonathan that he is just as Kryptonian as Jordan and he's as human as him too. Obviously, that being Jordan is as human as Jonathan. And I think this is a vital reminder for Jonathan because he feels kind of neglected at some points because of the fact that he doesn't have powers. But with Clark bringing this to our attention, do we think that his Kryptonian side could ever come out? And I think it's definitely likely. Like, I'm not expecting it this season, but if we do get like two seasons more, I think we will see maybe Jonathan exhibiting some sort of power. Now let's talk about that twist. What an ending to the episode. We get a flashback to Moxie, Bruno and Pierre along with a bunch of other intergang members. Moxie takes problem with Bruno going behind his back to all of the different members. And so at this point, Onomatopoeia goes nuts. And we're talking about Pierre here. I'm aware that this is in the past and this isn't our current version of the character, but we have seen Onomatopoeia kill many times in present day this season so she is ruthless and i was left speechless after this plus also this scene confirms that she was already a metahuman or maybe an alien we don't know that before the experiments also in terms of the alien she has cancer so you can presume she is human but if she was actually an alien would she have cancer or maybe there is some alien species that are susceptible but i'm going to presume she is a metahuman and this confirms that before the experiments before the serum she had powers i wonder if we're going to get any explanation as to that but that's actually a really big deal like that's one of the first metahumans that we've seen on Superman Lois that hasn't been a result of X Kryptonite or experiments. Obviously, that's just as far as I can remember. I could be totally missing out on a couple of past metahumans on the show, but this is very, very big. So with the new experiments, obviously Bruno is trying to help out Pierre and potentially she could become even more powerful if the experiments do work, but she could be in a lot of danger if they backfire. And so after all of this killing, Bruno manages to convince Pierre to join his side because they're in love and I think that was pretty clear from the start. And so Pierre out of nowhere just turns around and kills Moxie on the spot and I was like, oh my god. But what was even more of a oh my god WTF moment was the fact that the final scene of the episode revealed 
out of nowhere that Matteo is none other than Bruno and Pierre's son. That is some pure drama if I've ever seen any. I was not expecting that twist. Yes, they made a big deal out of Natalie and Matteo, but I was not expecting it to go that far that they would link Matteo to what's going on with Clark and Lois's story with Bruno and Pierre. That is insane. I can't believe what happened. Next week's episode is going to be crazy. But that pretty much does it in regards to my video right here. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment. It really helps out the channel. Also, subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any future videos. Remember, you can click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest Superman Lois video. But for now, I will catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.